Coming up on ATV News, how did you welcome in the Year of the Dragon? We'll show you how international students here on campus came together to celebrate Chinese New Year. Valentine's Day is coming up and we've got everything you need to know to make your sweetheart swoon. Students and faculty gather here at the Capitol. Find out why, coming up next. Valentine's Day is coming up and there's nothing more romantic than Aggie sports. 15 guys showed their love for Utah State last week. The temperatures may be dropping, but soon I'll tell you if there's going to be snow in them thar hills. TV News. I'm Kelsey Keller. And I'm Britta Anderson. Utah legislatures saw your point of view Friday as students all across the state rallied at the Capitol to make higher education a priority. Brianna Bodily takes us there. Students climbed Capitol Hill Friday, ready to do some of their own lobbying. Holding signs proclaiming, we are the 66%, they gathered on the steps of the Capitol in a rally for higher education. We're lobbying to put education as the state's first priority. Their platform, we are the 66%, is an obvious play on the occupation movement, but it means more than that to them. There was a study put out by Georgetown that said 66% of Utahns needed some kind of a post-secondary education in order for our workforce to meet the, the demands that would be placed on it. Now, if you look at the economic activity that's starting to percolate in our state, a lot of business is coming into Utah. And if we don't have a workforce that's ready to meet the demands of those businesses coming in, um, we're going to miss a strong economic opportunity. Mickelson said organizations like Education First Utah and Prosperity 2020 have also realized the importance of higher education. We're supporting the Education First initiative, which started as a petition that went to students throughout the state and garnered over 32,000 signatures. The students also had the opportunity to meet as a committee with House representatives and senators to discuss how legislation can help students trying to make it through college. Between all of the students that are here, we've set up appointments with 53 members of the legislature, which is over half of the members of the legislature. Students are hoping this rally is a step toward opening the doors for higher education in legislation. Jessica Daniels, a participating student, felt the rally was successful. Well, they're for our views and they totally understand where we're coming from and are in agreeing. Brianna Bodily, ATV News. Organizers plan to keep students involved in the movement all year. A neighborhood is still in shock after an explosion took the life of a man and his two sons. Josh Powell is believed by authorities to be responsible for the disappearance of his wife, Susan Powell, in 2009. After the court denied him custody of his two sons, authorities believe Powell set in motion a plan to commit a double murder-suicide. When his sons, Charles and Brayden, came for a supervised visit Sunday, Powell barred the way of the social worker, locking his children inside. Moments later, the house exploded. Powell had doused the house in gasoline, and autopsies suggest Powell attempted to kill his sons with a hatchet before the explosion. If you're looking for a way to get your taxes done for free, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, or VITA program, might have an option for you. VITA also gives you a chance to get more money back on your tax returns. I went to their offices to learn more. VITA is a program that allows low-income families to get free help filing their taxes. Whether you do it on paper or fill it out online, Tax forms can be confusing and intimidating, especially for those of us who aren't accountants. But with the VITA program, if you qualify, you can have a professional do all of this for you for free. Last year I filed my own with TurboTax, and when I was doing that I was really worried that I was going to be missing a deduction or that I was going to input something wrong, and it's just really nice to know that there's somebody here that knows all the ins and outs. Um, our taxes are supposed to be easy right now, but it's still nice to just know that everything's being done right. All you do is set an appointment and fill out a couple of forms and you're in. There's an intake sheet when you come in that you'll just have to fill out. It's just your basic information, your name, address. The volunteers are trained IRS approved accountants who are willing to help you in any way they can. I just got my bachelor's in accounting a year ago last November and I like to help people, especially people that don't, you know, don't understand the tax laws and 
because it can be really confusing. A lot of places will advertise that it's for free, but they'll charge you for state and they'll charge you for any additional W-2s, different things like that. We do both state and federal for free. You don't have anything to lose. It's just an hour of your time and then your taxes are done. Vita will be offering this service every Monday through Friday until April 12th. You can schedule an appointment to meet with a volunteer by simply calling 211. When we come back, we'll return to the Capitol and tell you about the latest dis anti-discrimination bill. And we'll show you how international students celebrated Chinese New Year. How do you define discrimination? Well, last weekend the state of Utah did just that when they took another look at their anti-discrimination bill. I found out more about the bill and saw just how people are feeling about it. Utah's anti-discrimination law prohibits discrimination against race, gender, and religion. But one topic not included is sexual orientation. Last Friday at the Capitol, a bill was presented to add sexual orientation to the list. Citizens had strong opinions both for and against the bill. My oldest child, um, he knows I'm up here today and he will wonder what happened. And it means a lot to him that things like this get passed because it sends a signal to him that his moms are um, protected. We've seen in several situations across the country, whenever there is special protections for the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender community, that that actually takes away protections from other people, their freedom of religion or their freedom of conscience. We're finding that in classrooms and courtrooms across the country that sexual freedoms are being protected over religious freedoms and we're concerned that this bill would add to that conflict. I support this bill because it's common decency. You know, we believe as Americans that our rights should be protected, that people should be protected no matter who they are and what they think and what they believe. And I think that should be extended to sexual preference, sexual identity as well. We should all have an opportunity to earn a living and keep a roof over our heads. Gay and transgender people are good, hard-working people, just like everyone else. At the end of the day, after the votes were cast, the majority turned the bill down, leaving it tabled. We were grateful. We were pleased. We feel like um, this wouldn't have been the best thing for Utah. It's a disappointment, but I do think this is a special sign of progress this year. This is the first time that the bill was actually heard in committee, and the vote was uh, four to two, so we had two votes in favor. State Senator Ben McAdams sponsored the bill and says he plans to continue his work in the future and move forward. It's the year of the dragon according to the cycle of animal-based years in Chinese tradition. And the students here at USU made sure it was a celebration to remember. Chinese New Year, a holiday that is steeped in tradition, yet still looks firmly to the future. Its date changes from year to year because it's celebrated on the Lunar New Year. Students at Utah State celebrated it this year on February 3rd and 4th. On February 3rd, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences held a celebration to pass the new The event featured both traditional Chinese song and dance, as well as modern dances and songs. During the celebration, prizes were given away to those who could name or say certain things in Chinese. Both young and old got into the swing of things. I like the part where they were jumping. The guys that were doing all the flips and jumps. Kind of a, a delightful and fun adaptation of a lot of uh, old school Chinese and new school Chinese mixed together. And I thought the show was wonderful. It was a lot of fun. There were a lot of entertaining acts and it was really funny at points. Finding out more about the Chinese customs or Chinese New Year's is as simple as talking to your fellow students, either in the Chinese language program or those who may be native to the country. Randall Henry, ATV News. Thanks, Randall. And you know, if you were born in 2012, 2000, 1988, or even 1976, you fall under the year of the dragon. Author Jordan Christie visited Utah State University students. She spoke to students about her book and gave some helpful advice on how to be classy. Utah State University students welcome to author Jordan Christie to campus last week for students' arts and lecture event. Christie, who wrote How to Be a Hepburn in the Hilton World, addressed students on how to be classy in the society we live in today. Have you ever seen 
somebody who's an Audrey Hepburn, you know, dancing on tables at clubs. The book gave me like really good advice on like wardrobe and accessories to wear, what to do with boys, and just life lessons. Christy spoke about life experiences. But then I got to thinking about it and it actually kind of is. Her inspiration for her book? Um, when I got to college, I really started to realize that there were a lot more girls that thought like myself. And even had time to answer a few questions. Did you ever do like debutante or cotillion or anything? I never did. Chrissy's message not only made an impact on women at USU, but also several men. On what women, what makes a classy woman. Um, and I thought that was really attractive. Like the inner self being represented by the outer self. Like what? If the inner side, the inside of a woman is beautiful, then the outside will become beautiful. And I really thought that was pretty cool. Christy left the audience with simple advice. Always remain classy. Being classy in a world that's sometimes trashy. Tonight, Arthur Jordan Christy was at Utah State University. She gave her insight, advice, and answered several questions from her book, How to Be a Hepburn in a Hilton World. From Logan, Utah, Courtney Robinson, ATV News. It looks like a lot of people learned some useful information on how to be classy from Jordan Christie. Thanks, Courtney. Well, right now, our very own weatherman, Randall Henry, is chilling outside. Randall, how's it feeling out there? Cold. And let me tell you, that guy over there, he's wearing shorts. I'll let you know if you should be wearing shorts, too, right after this. Hey, guys. Yeah. Some technical difficulties. Stupid microphone was fighting with me. And it still is. Darn you. Darn you, microphone. Anyways, this week on ATV News, it's certainly been an unusual winter, hasn't it? Well, this week, things are going to change a little bit. It's going to start to be a little more um, winter-like. And next, we have our air quality. Our air quality is, right now, it's in the yellows. It's not great-ish. Definitely, the snow is definitely going to help with that, bring get, um, the parts per million of the ozone and other particulates in the atmosphere. It's going to help out with things. Our national forecast, you can see that the snow is mostly through Utah. It's in uh, Nevada, Oregon, Washington. Um, next, this week, today. 39 is a high, 23 is a low, and as you can see outside, if you're looking out your window, it's snowing. Tomorrow, our high is going to be 42 and our low is 20, and it's going to be mostly cloudy throughout the day. Friday, it's going to be again a high of 42 with a low of 24, also mostly cloudy throughout the day. On Saturday, we're going to have a high of 44 and a low of 20, and there's a slight chance of snow around 20%. On Sunday, high of 40, low of 26, and we're going to continue to see a slight chance of precipitation. Well, that's it for weather. Stick around for ATV Sports right after the break. Hey Aggies, welcome to ATV Sports. I'm Bailey McMurray. The football team is already preparing for next season and signed 15 recruits last Wednesday, 11 of those recruits being for the offensive line. Four of those guys are from Utah. This is a definite positive for the Aggies, not to mention that three big guys have returned home from their LDS missions, all with a full four-year eligibility. Coach Gary Anderson was happy about the day overall, even though recruiting is getting harder and harder every year. If we look at ourselves, the people we recruited against uh, other schools, uh, whether it's a BCS school or, or teams within different conferences, uh, the level of competition went up again for us, and it's continued to do that every single year. I felt like the coaches reacted reasonably well to that. Uh, we can learn from this recruiting process that we just went through without question and, and be better in some certain areas. The first spring game of football this year is on April 28th. Bad news for the Aggie basketball team hit on Sunday night when it was announced that Brady Jardine, who was sitting out on a medical red shirt for a foot injury, is now unable to continue on with his career. Jardine sustained an injury in his foot on November 19th at home against Southern Utah University. The injury includes torn ligaments supporting his midfoot and a Liz Franck sprain. The surgery that must be performed will not allow him to continue to play basketball. Coach Stu Morrill tried to explain the difficulty of this unexpected news. It's, it's hard. It's, it was 
it was hard on him and hard on our coaching staff. We met with him, and and uh, you know he was crushed by it. Uh, so were we, you know. It's it's hard. It's it was it was hard on him and hard on our coaching staff. We met with him, and and uh, you know he was crushed by it. Uh, so were we, you know. Uh, it's uh, it's part of life, I guess. This is an unfortunate loss for the Aggies as Jardine was a definite threat on both offense and defense. Aggie fans who were around for the 2010-2011 season will never forget the crazy vertical he got on this dunk against St. Mary's. He is unbelievable when it comes to getting his vertical up. He is so full of passion when he plays basketball and he will definitely be missed because, I mean, heck, we definitely need all the help we can get at this point. His hops will be missed next season, and let's hope the redshirt team, with an average height of 6'9", which is the largest in the country, can pick up the slack for Jardine. Best of luck to him with his future endeavors. Even though Brady Jardine's career halted to a full stop, the rest of the team has five straight home games to worry about in the next three weeks. Last week wasn't the best morale booster for the guys as they go into their home games. They took two tough losses on the road against Fresno State and Nevada. The Nevada loss was especially hard because if the guys would have just made one more shot, they would have ended the Wolfpack's 15 game winning streak. But the victory didn't come. This weekend, the boys take on Louisiana Tech, who is now 11 and 12. Then on Saturday, quite literally our biggest matchup against New Mexico State Aggies, Aggies who have a record of 17 and seven. Coach Morrow wants the boys to come out with their best and encourages the fans to do the same. People have lots of activities, lots of things with their, their kids and all of that, which I fully understand. But uh, hopefully there's enough that can free up time to come to the, to come to the game. Usually, uh, usually when there's uh, national television involved, that usually motivates a few. So hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll help. Four and five in whack play and sits at fifth in WAC standings. And the Aggie sports keep coming. Even though the guys are having a hard time, we can't say the same thing for women's basketball team. The ladies have won their past three games, all which took place on the road. The first win was against the Idaho State Vandals, 78-70. The next W came at San Jose against the Spartans, 78-73. And the last away game took place in Hawaii, where you think the women would lose their focus, but nope, they won big. 69 to 55. Players like Ashley Brown are stepping up their game. Brown recorded her sixth double double of the season and her career high of 30 points against the Spartans. The Lady Ags are back in the spectrum this Thursday, taking on Louisiana Tech, hopefully scoring that coveted first place in WAC standing. And last but not least, the ladies' gymnastics team was back in the spectrum. And last Saturday, they were taking on the Arizona State Sun Devils. and some bottom outs for the Aggies, and just some bad landings. But overall, the Aggies did pretty well. It was Rebecca Holiday that saved the day with her score of 9.775 on beam, 9.8 on floor, and another 9.8 on bars. Holiday was just killing it the whole night because the rest of the Aggies were having a hard time, but she's confident they will get better as the season continues on. I know we can do better. We've seen it this year already, um, but there are those ups and downs every season. So I think today was just a little bit of a lower point, but we're gonna bring it back up next week. And I think we're just gonna keep progressing from here this season. After the meet, I told them, we're gonna have good days, we're gonna have bad days. And it's what you do with those bad days, you know, once we get back in the gym. I, you, it's hard to stay consistent that many times in a row. We've got a young team. For them to put it together, you know, 13 weeks in a row is going to be tough. So we just, uh, we'll, we'll hit it next week and uh, we still stayed in there. We had some highlights. We still had some personal bests. So they're, they're doing good and it's great to see this team fight. The ladies are back in the spectrum this Friday meeting up with the San Jose State Spartans. The meet starts at 7 p.m. Well, that's it for ATV Sports. Stay tuned for more ATV news. St. Valentine's Day is drawing near, and the date doctor came to Logan to help you draw nearer to your sweetheart. Ryan Humphreys went to find out how it's done.
Get ready for a fun, entertaining, and meaningful time with The Dating Doctor. David Coleman is known around the world as The Dating Doctor. He has received many awards, written several best-selling books, and is a highly sought-after relationship expert. He brought his tips to USU last Thursday. We're talking about dating relationships, romance, sex, marriage, divorce, healthy relationships, and they turn out 700, 800, 1,000 people every time I come. In Coleman's second trip to USU, the TSC ballroom is full of students. They try to learn from it. They really enjoy themselves while we're here and get the most out of the show, but they never try to one-up me or steal it. And a lot of students at other campuses try to do that kind of stuff. Coleman expressed how much he loves to speak at USU. Utah State University was one of my five favorite schools in the Utah State students have a tendency to stay in touch with me. They'll thank me and they'll say, hey, I acted upon this, I put this into my life, and it's really working. Coleman brought his own brand of entertainment to USU and interacted with the students the moment he stepped on stage. I can honestly tell from what they say to me after and texts and email and tweets that they're learning something and they're putting it into their life. It's just really motivational and help, help guys have the confidence they need to step up and go ask a girl out. It's not that hard. I just loved how funny and engaging he was to the audience. It was a great time. Overall, I just thought it was really, really positive. I really like the speaker. Coleman gave advice on dating with tips such as why nice guys finish last. I loved how he explained why good guys finish last um, and how we can overcome that. To know that coming all the way out here and doing a show that they love and they enjoy, but that they learn from and they use, doesn't get better than that. Now there's no easy way to find that special someone, but hopefully the dating doctor got some people pointed in the right direction. Yeah, you know, I wish it was easier. But if you're still unsure about what to give your sweetheart this Valentine's Day, two Logan residents have a warm solution for you, and they're located right here in town. Meredith Kinney is right outside with the scoop. Um, Meredith, what? What are you wearing? Oh, well, Britta, I am actually wearing a fox hat right now, and I'm feeling kind of stupid. Do I look as dumb as I think I do? Mm, I think you're looking foxy. <laughs> well, um, their hats aren't animal shaped, but they will keep you warm. Um, one Logan couple has taken the winter hats to a whole new level. Tara and Mitch Duffin run the company Beer Beanies out of their home in North Logan. Mitch yes. Duffin said they started with an idea, and the company just took off. I just, Ed, did you see the guy that kind of had that ski mask on? I said, you know what would look really cool is that if we could take the, if we could make a hat that actually looked like it had a beard on it. The Duffins began selling the beanies on Etsy.com, a website for homemade goods, but the demand quickly grew. Since then, they have hired more help, but Tara continues to sew some hats together on her kitchen table. You take it, it's really easy to put on. You just take the back like that, and then you slide it on. And that's it. All the materials are U.S. made, and the beards are hand crocheted to be attached to the hat. It's been really important to us to try and keep the money in our economy as much as we can keep local and as much as we can keep in the U.S. The handmade hats are sold around the world. Tara says the best part of the experience is receiving feedback from customers. It's fun to, to have get emails from all over the world. The idea of beard hats has been around for a while. We didn't invent the beard hat, and those have been around since 1920. The Duffins were the first to mass market the idea. Nobody had ever made the beard beanie, and so we made the beard beanie and that's what uh, that's what we got today. Well, the hats can be purchased online at beardbeanies.com and the Duffin said they'll give a discount to Cash Valley residents. At least this hat works in the snow. Back to you guys. Thanks, Meredith. I might have to get one of those hats for my Valentine. And by the way, after you get that special something for that special someone, you may still feel like there is nothing to do in Logan on that special day. But some students on campus have created a website to help you find local activities to do. Romina Nadokovic surfed the net to find out more. It only takes a few clicks on a keypad to figure out what to do in Logan these days. The Nothing To Do in Logan website has become a popular site for anyone who wants to know what events are going on in Logan. I created a website that has a comprehensive list of all the events going on in town, um, information about eating out, dining, um, recreation, just anything there is to do, we've got it on our website. Um, I see a lot of opportunity in the near future to, to create a 
a service for people to, to use in Logan and also the surrounding areas. The site provides tabs that help you navigate the site, calendars filled with events for the entire month, Google Maps to help navigate you to the event, and popular websites are posted so you can get more information on your favorite events. The calendar for this week provides some fun events. I'm at the Ellen Eccles Theater here on Main Street where every Monday and Friday they do tours at 1030 in the morning for anyone who is interested in seeing the beautiful and historic theater. At the Cache Valley Fun Park they have cosmic bowling every Friday from 7 p.m. to close on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and as well 7 p.m. to close. So stop by because it is a lot of fun. The site provides videos if you prefer them and if you want to post an ad or be a sponsor for the site, you can. Um, we've also got uh, social media aspects, Facebook and Twitter. And so you can go on to nothingtodoinlogan.com and find some ideas for what you can do in Logan up to the minute uh, events. It has already gotten 68,684 views. I mean, as a team, we could be our own bosses. Romina Nadakovich, ATV News.